All right, so ever since we started doing laptop videos, a lot of you people have been asking us to cover gaming laptops. So you wish and we deliver. So we bought this gaming laptop, the Asus Tough F15. So this comes with an i7 12 Gen H series processor, 144Hz display and, and for you gamers out there, a RTX 3050 Ti graphics card. All of this for under 95,000 rupees. For a gaming laptop, that's a good price. Wouldn't you agree, Sayan? Absolutely. Sayan is our in-house TW gamer. Few rare breed around here. And a lot of people buy gaming laptops for video editing, graphic designing. So we'll also talk about that. Also, we have been using the Asus Tough F15 for about a month now. So we could give you guys a proper review. Useful video. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's get gaming. Yeah! That was not a good one. It's so cringe. Well, you get this cool looking box. It opens up like this. That's different. And you get gaming stickers. What is a gaming laptop without gaming stickers? Stay tough. Inside you get the laptop, some paperwork, a power cable and this heavy 200 watt charging brick. Okay, this is pretty heavy. Hang on, hang on. Let me check this. See the power brick with the entire cable and all. Weighs almost like 600 grams. 596, 600. And the laptop itself weighs like 2.1 kgs. This game is a power lifter. You definitely look like a power lifter. So. Not sure about gamers, but you do. And before we get to the video, this one's good. This video is sponsored by yours and yours only Techwiser. And I know a better person who can speak about this. So Techwiser is looking for the best talent in the creator economy. And this time we are hiring for three different positions. This, this and that. But before we begin, there are two important things to keep in mind. Number one, we are looking for in-house member who can work from our daily NCR office. And second, Although a degree or a relevant work experience will look nice, but even if you don't have that, we welcome all the creators who have passion for tech and wants to make it big. Like always, share your proof of work with us. It could be a tech YouTube channel or an Instagram page or even a Discord community that you have grown from the scratch. So like always, links to how to apply will be in the description of this video. Looking forward to meet some awesome creators. Okay, so to make things simple for you guys, I'll be telling you the pros and cons. Four things that I really liked, one that is meh and two which I wish were better. Now before I get to the performance section, the first pro is the design. Like, have a look at this design. Looks minimal and gamery at the same time. So on the top you have the tough logo embossed and at the bottom you have the vents. And interestingly, this red rubber material. Now I'm not sure what is this for, but I'm guessing it is to just reduce the flex. Also see here, you can easily open the lid with one hand. Another interesting choice of the design is like the vents on the top. So this is here for cool air intake and on the right you have the hot air exhaust. Also you get these four LEDs here, which shows if the laptop is on, battery power, aeroplane mode and all of that. And see here, if I boot up the laptop, it makes this cute animation. The only thing I didn't like about the design is the stickers. Like, yes, most Windows laptops have stickers. They have two stickers here by the trackpad. Of course, you all know the reason for the stickers. But then there is one big sticker over here and this is a bit distracting to me. Like if I'm watching a movie, the sticker is always in my line of view. And since we are on the subject of design, the second pro would be the keyboard and trackpad. So you get a full-size RGB keyboard here. You have the alphabets as well as the numpad over here. Now Asus added additional buttons on the top. So you get dedicated volume buttons as well as this aura button if I press this. And from here, I can control the light settings for the keyboard. I'll set this to rainbow color. Other than this, typing on the keyboard is very smooth. I wrote a lot of scripts and emails on this laptop and I didn't have any issues. There is no screen wobble as such. Also, you get a pretty decent sized trackpad too. It supports all the windows gesture, four finger, three finger and all of that. My only concern with the keyboard and trackpad is, see it catches a lot of oil from my fingers very easily. This makes the laptop look a bit dirty. Can we wash this like Gopi Bahu? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Third, you get all the necessary ports here. You get the charging port, Ethernet port, HDMI port, two USB-C ports, one USB-A and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the other side, again, you get a USB 3.1 port. And in my one month of usage, here's an interesting thing that I noticed. Like if you connect an external display via this Type-C Thunderbolt port, see here, it is powered by Intel integrated graphics. However, now if I connect the external display via this Type-C port, you see it is powered by the NVIDIA GPU. 
So in case if you want to connect an external display, use the HDMI port or the non-Thunderbolt Type-C port, you'll get better performance. And you can know more about these products from the product tag below. But the highlight of this laptop is the performance. So this comes with an Intel i7-12700H processor. For those of you who don't know, there is U-series, then there is P-series and then H-series. H is the highest end processor. You get 16 GB DDR5 RAM, 512 GB SSD storage. Now let's open up this laptop and see what all is upgradable. Okay, so see here there are two RAM slots and both are occupied. But the good thing is that you can upgrade it up to 32 GB RAM. There is only one SSD slot. So if you want to upgrade, you will have to just swap it out. And of course, it can handle casual tasks with ease, like browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, watching HDR stuff, multitasking. There is no lag or anything. And I even did photo editing on it. I made the thumbnail of our Pixel 7a's video on this laptop. And this laptop performed like a champ. Now we did run some benchmarks. This was Cinebench. And this was 3D Mark score, which only rates the GPU. But again, benchmarks are benchmarks. And this is a gaming laptop. So it can sure handle CSGO and all very smoothly. But let's take it up a notch. Sayan, would you help us? Now, before I play any games, let me show you something very interesting. So see here, this comes with a 4 GB RTX 3050 Ti graphics card. But now, if I go on NVIDIA control panel, see, it is showing 95 watts GPU, which is on the higher end. But now, if I go on Amazon, see, there are RTX 4050 laptops in this price range also. But these are underclocked because see here on their website, it is showing max GPU power is 45 watts. So in reality, a 3050 Ti running at 95 watts should outperform a 4050 GPU at 45 watts. Aww, 3 is bigger than 4. <laughs> okay, so first let me try out Forza Horizon 5. Uh, the game's not starting. Okay, so the laptop is not plugged in. When the laptop isn't plugged in, it actually uses the integrated graphics card. Hence, it's not even starting in. Okay, and for all the gamers out there, this laptop also supports Mach Switch, which basically means you can run the display on your dedicated graphics card and you can get more performance. Let's play Forza Horizon 5. All right. Welcome back, Spider. See, welcome back. Your username is Spider. Yes, because you know, I love Spider-Man. Achha. Kind of cringe, but yeah. Okay, so the gameplay is really smooth. The shadows are good. So this is actually running on 1080p high settings. I'm getting around 110 FPS or something. This is a very smooth gameplay. Very smooth gameplay, I must say. Damn, oh, even, no, no. <laughs> even I feel like playing it. Okay, so I'm getting around 120 FPS. So, like, that's really good. And since this is a 144Hz display, the gameplay is very smooth. Let's play a slightly demanding game. I'll play Control. It uses full ray tracing and everything. So, I'll turn on DLSS. Everything is set to high. But the best part about Control is ray tracing. So, I'll set it to high. Uh, and for people who don't know, in this ray tracing mode, the graphics looks very photorealistic. Like you can see all the reflection, the buildings and everything. Okay, so I'm getting good frame rates actually. I mean, very playable frame rate. And this display also supports VRR. So even at lower frame rates, there won't be any screen tearing or anything. See the reflection over here, this, very realistic. Okay, so I'm getting around 40 to 45 FPS with every setting set to maximum. That's like really good. And if I turn off RTX, this will probably give me more than 100 FPS. Is that good or bad? That's more than good. So yeah, I would say for 1080p gaming on high setting, this is a really good option. What about the display? It's 144 hertz. The gameplay is smooth. But the display doesn't seem that bright to me. Which brings me to the display. Well, I would say it is decent. Like yes, the higher refresh rate is good. Not just in games, even in day-to-day -day usage. Window animation looks more fluid because of the 144Hz. Also, this is an anti-glare display. So even if I have a hard light behind me, like the studio light, there's no reflection or anything on the screen. But like San mentioned, the display doesn't get very bright. Like while using the laptop, I used it on my bed and that was right beside the window. During the day, it would sometimes feel a bit dull. And just for comparison, I have this Realme laptop. This is around 40,000 rupees. I'll play a YouTube video on this. And the display of the Realme, if you see side by side, is much better. So I would say the display quality could have been slightly better. That being said, I would say this laptop has two big cons and both of them are not just specific to this laptop, but almost all gaming laptops in general. First is the speakers. 
So let me share a personal experience. I was watching a movie with my cousin on this laptop, and we had to manually sync the audio of the movie with our mobile because the speakers from the mobile are better than this laptop. Let me give you a short audio comparison. So this is the audio from the tough laptop. And now this is the audio from the Realme laptop. The difference is pretty evident and the second con is battery life. Since this has a dedicated GPU, this consumes a lot of battery. So if I'm doing just normal stuff like watching movies and browsing the web, it gives me around 4 hours of screen on time and again, I'll share another personal experience. So I had to travel for work and this one time I forgot the power brick at home. So I thought no problem, I'll use a colleague's charging brick. So see, this is another Asus power brick from my colleague and even though it does plug into the port perfectly, it won't charge. Also the type C ports here are for data transfer only. I mean we are not sure if this is with our unit, you can confirm in the comments. Generally this is a Thunderbolt 4 port and it should support charging. But here if you see, no charge detection. And that's bad. So you'll have to carry the power brick everywhere. So power lifter or not, this is an added hassle. But then again, all these cons are common with almost all gaming laptops. So what's the conclusion? Is this the most? Powerful gaming laptop under 1 lakh rupees in the market. Well, currently the Asus Tough F15 is selling for 95,000 rupees and at that price, I would say this is a really, really good choice. This has an i7 H series processor, so it can handle photo or even video editing smoothly. This RTX 3050 Ti is a very good GPU. It can handle demanding games pretty well too. And like Sayan said, at the same price, a RTX 4050 laptop will underperform than this. So this RTX 3050 Ti laptop is a good deal. And do let me know if you're using this laptop. Do let us know your review. It would be helpful for the community. We'll pin up the good ones. On that note, this is Vidik signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew. Pew.